Hey, um, Johnny Appleseed is a 2018 uh, novel by Joshua Whitehead. Uh, a uh, novel uh, about Johnny, who is a uh, two-spirited queer fellow who is um, gets the news that his uh, father-in-law has died and he needs to make some make some money to get back to the reservation to support her mother his mother doesn't really care about um doesn't really care about the the, the father-in-law he was abusive and homophobic uh and not basically one of him him's, he sided with all of the as he calls it, hom homophobic cous cousins who basically threatened to stomp Johnny if he ever w came back to the res. Um, he, um, as he's as he's trying to make money, uh, usually through a kind of a, a sex cam, video cam kind of sessions with guys, so he has some kind of in-person sessions as well. Um, he kind of clicks back and forth of memories of back then. Um, um, with his uh, granny, Kukum, uh, who was a really positive, accepting presence in his life, um, to um, Tyson, his his best friend, kind of growing up on the, on, on the res, best friend, lover on the res, who is, who's also come to Winnipeg. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we kind of hear about their their in their intense relationship and that Tyson also is seeing uh, a, a, a woman uh, Jordan who is a very tough uh, res reservation woman uh, in herself um, you know um, so we we've we've got all that um, it's a book that doesn't really have a particularly a narrative drive you know, for all the talk of storytelling, it's kind of, it's very kind of stilted, stilted, it's, it's poetic and wounded and, um, heartfelt and sincere, but also stilted. And maybe the poetry isn't that great, <laughs> to be brutally honest. I found, you know, you know, it, it, it's really reaching a lot of the time, Whitehead is a lot of the time reaching for poetry where maybe he would be better, better served, um, to, to, to be more trying to actually tell a story and to kind of get a, find a drive. There's developments with Tyson that happen at the very end of the novel that it's like, I wonder if this was at the beginning of the novel and it kind of drove him a little bit more, had a little bit more of a thing. There's a little bit too much of a, maybe with that, that, that kind of, kind of poetic language that it it feels a little bit at hand's breadth at hand's length where if you're talking about something poetic it's kind of off here kind of held held to a distance whereas I think we need more fuck fuck my my best friend's gotten his girlfriend pregnant and my 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 lover has gotten my my um my his his girlfriend pregnant and is gonna be you know basically devote his life to that and is leaving me and that that would be like a kind of a little bit of a driver that way to, for the rest of the story a little bit more of a power and maybe that's not exactly what Whitehead's intention was but it's like you feel like there needed to be attention I I, I for a, a good while there assumed that Cookham was still alive and that she was back at the reservation and that maybe a part of the story at the end was going to be him um, having having that conversation with Cookham but actually, no. One of the other things that gets revealed near the end is that Cookham's. Well, I don't know if it gets revealed at the end, but it gets revealed as we're going along. Is no Cookham has died in the interim of him having left the reservation, uh, so he's never going to get those words at the end. Though he, uh, at the end, I guess he ma imagined stuff. Um, there's a scene at the end where he, he he comes back and he has this kind of conversation with his mother, which is very much speechification. It's like he gives a speech and I don't feel like they're two characters that were actually uh, getting anywhere. And I mean, they don't have a dramatic, there's no conflict. There's no, 
squaring things off in a way, or at least nothing that it's stilted again. It's it's speech, um, acceptance of speech, speech. Um, so, you know, while while there's like, you know, there's there's real experience here, and there's a real character of Johnny. It's not really a story that kind of carries it along or elevates it up beyond being a lot of memories kind of in a jumble bag um, that are then kind of t are thrown out on the thing. Um, there's an afterward where uh, where uh, Joshua Whitehead talks about, you know, the intentions of the novel, which it's like I didn't need because those intentions were very apparent, you know, of wanting to give voice of representation to uh, two-spirited indigiqueer um, um, people in his community, and that this book is for them, not for me, some some straightish white white dude looking out from the outside, niggling away at it. It's like this is my own bullshit review, which I'm keeping to myself because I don't really have anything to say other than my discontents and um, you know the parts. It was six hours long and it felt long because it didn't have a story to it. It didn't have a thing and that's fine if it didn't have a story to it, if it had the language, the poetic the kind of a drive that way, but it didn't have that either. It felt it stilted, stilted and not like not great poetry in my in my opinion that way um you know hearts are stones and and you know she's light as the wind it's like those are just little things it's like uh it's like come on and there is actual kind of stuff in there as well that there there is but there's also just a lot of that kind of hack stuff as well this does feel like a first novel i'll be interested to see what joshua whitehead does next uh, and whether he develops from there or if he gets more faux poetical, in which case I probably will leave it behind. But we'll see. We'll see. Early days for this guy, and I'd be really interested to hear, hear what he does next. And since this was written in 2018, I'm sure he's hopefully been working, working, working for a while at something else. Hopefully. Hopefully. You can only hope. All right. I will leave it there. More videos later.